Here we're going to discuss predicting the products of simple nucleophilic substitution reactions. And this really comes down to identifying these three key components that we've discussed. The nucleophile, the electrophilic atom or the electron accepting atom, and the leaving group. As long as we can do this and we understand the nature of nucleophilic substitution, it's straightforward to draw the products of a nucleophilic substitution. To draw the product of a nucleophilic substitution reaction, first identify the nucleophile, leaving group, and electrophile. And this is a good practice to get into for any substitution or elimination process, and indeed more generally, any organic reaction. You're going to want to identify the nucleophilic molecule and the electrophilic molecule. This often involves separating ionic compounds, particularly where the nucleophile is involved. For example, in this first case, NaSH isn't really NaSH, it's really Na+, the sodium cation, and SH-, thiohydroxide. Na+, is just an inert cation, but thiohydroxide has the potential to act as an electron donor, that is, as a nucleophile. We know this because of the negative charge in this molecule. Looking at the other reacting partner, ethyl bromide, we see an electronegative atom that has the potential to serve as a leaving group or nucleophuge. And from this, we can reason that the atom it's connected to, this carbon, is the electron accepting carbon, or electrophile. So we've now identified the three key components. And the key to drawing the product now is just understanding the nature of nucleophilic substitution, which involves donation of a pair of electrons from the nucleophile to the electrophilic atom, here a carbon, and departure of the leaving group with a pair of electrons. And so while the detailed mechanism may not occur in a concerted manner like this, thinking about the mechanism in this way allows us to draw the products with high fidelity. The product in this case contains the ethyl group within the electrophilic molecule linked to SH. It may also be worthwhile to draw the byproduct of this reaction, Br-, the conjugate base of the leaving group. In looking at this second example and searching for a nucleophile, we find two atoms that bear lone pairs, this oxygen and this oxygen. And so, in terms of the potential to act as a nucleophile, at least hypothetically, either of these oxygens could act as a nucleophile. However, the linkage to the tosyl group, which we know to be a strong electron withdrawing group and generally part of good leaving groups, suggests that the nucleophilic oxygen is going to be this one in benzyl alcohol. In fact, the OTS or tosylate group here is likely to act as a leaving group, making the electrophilic carbon the one connected to that leaving group. In the course of the reaction through some kind of mechanism that doesn't actually work exactly this way in a concerted manner, a pair of electrons is donated from the nucleophilic oxygen to the electrophilic carbon, and OTS departs with a pair of electrons, forming an important byproduct. OTS minus. Notice here that the nucleophile is neutral, which suggests that the immediate product of substitution should contain a positive charge, since the charge of the nucleophile increases by one unit after donating a pair of electrons. And indeed, if we look at the intermediate immediately following these curved arrows, we end up with the molecule shown here, which is cationic. In practice, however, workup typically removes this positive charge often via treatment with a basic aqueous solution, or what's called basic workup. Think about what happens after basic workup. Well, after we treat this mixture with an aqueous base, we end up deprotonating the most acidic position within these conditions, which is clearly the positively charged oxygen, and we're left with a neutral product, in this case, a new ether. We can think of the byproduct of aqueous workup here as H3O+, where the proton that was originally within our intermediate following nucleophilic substitution ends up incorporated into water. In this final example, we again need to separate the ionic salt into its cationic and anionic components and decide which of the two is more reactive. Here, lithium plus ion is just an innocent spectator, whereas OPH minus is a much stronger anion and has the potential to act as a nucleophile in this context. The leaving group here is the electronegative halogen atom chlorine, which would like to depart from the carbon it's linked to with a pair of electrons, and that makes the electrophilic carbon the one I'm circling here. Once again, I'll remind you that the mechanistic details here may be slightly more complicated. That is, substitution may not necessarily occur in a concerted manner like this, but at some point or another in the mechanism, the nucleophile uses a pair of electrons to form a bond to the electrophilic carbon, 
and the leaving group departs with a pair of electrons. In the product, all of the rest of the structure is exactly the same. In fact, the alkene group doesn't really get involved in the reaction at all. But the Cl has been replaced with OPH, and the byproduct of this reaction is Cl-. One thing worth mentioning in the first and third examples is that the sodium cation in the first example and the lithium cation in the third example are spectator ions. And so we might draw them on the product side just to show overall balance between the reactant and product side in these reactions. To predict the product of a nucleophilic substitution reaction when we know nucleophilic substitution is what's going on, all we have to do is follow this general curved arrow paradigm of donating a pair from the nucleophile and sending a pair to the leaving group. However, as I alluded to several times within this video, the exact mechanism of nucleophilic substitution may differ from the concerted or simultaneous paradigm that's shown here, with nucleophile donation and leaving group departure happening at the same time. In the next few videos, we'll unveil the detailed mechanisms of nucleophilic substitution, and there are two that we're going to focus on, SN1 and SN2.